Okay, so two questions for you. Are you spending countless hours, even days, editing photos from a session? And do you wanna speed up that workflow so that you can focus more time on other projects or even take a break? Well, you clicked on the right video because in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips on how to speed up your Lightroom workflow and how I was able to speed up my workflow from taking four to five hours, sometimes even a day on a session, to just under an hour to call, edit, and deliver. Most of these things are tips you're gonna do in Lightroom, but one of the most important tip for a faster workflow is actually shifting your mindset. So most photographers fall into the artist trap, making sure their photos are perfection before delivering them to their client. The truth is the majority of clients don't understand the editing process. They don't know that it takes four hours to retouch skin in Photoshop. They don't even know what retouching is. They don't know if you should have added more blues into the shadows. They don't even know that you can manipulate a photo this much. All they care about is that they're getting good photos taken on a high quality camera. And this is the difference, you've probably heard it before, between running your business as an artist and running your business like a business. At the end of the day, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. And being efficient is not affecting my ability to create good photos or affecting my love for photography. I'm trying to run a business and the faster I get a project out the door just means I can get more projects in and make more money. Is there anything wrong with perfecting your photos? No, but the truth is what us pixel peeping photographers think might not look good, I can guarantee you the client will think completely differently. In all my time shooting, whether I spent 15 minutes on a session or five hours, I've never had a disappointed client. Unless it's a passion or personal project, I try not to waste my time in the editing process. So the faster you escape this artist's trap, the less time you're going to waste on each photo and the faster your workflow is going to be. Okay, now the version of Lightroom you use is going to make a difference in speed as well. If you use Lightroom, it's actually a cloud-based application and Lightroom Classic is a storage-based application. So when you're editing on regular Lightroom or like the newest version of Lightroom, every single edit you make will have to get synced to the cloud. And sometimes when you're making a lot of edits or bulk edits on a photo, it's gonna take time to sync all those edits to the cloud, in turn slowing down the performance or your workflow. So I like to use Lightroom Classic, I still use Lightroom Classic to this day, because it's fast, it doesn't have to sync those edits to a cloud. I don't know, I found it to be faster than Lightroom. Okay, now because we're talking about setting up a faster workflow, we need to talk about SSDs. More importantly, you need to be editing your photos off of SSDs like this. This is a Samsung T7. You can use any SSD though, even if you have your MacBook that has an SSD on it, edit photos off of there. You don't wanna be editing photos off the camera's SD card. You don't wanna be editing off of hard drives. I think I... No, I don't have one here, but you don't wanna be editing off of hard drives. Those are gonna be much slower than SSDs. SSDs have faster read and write speeds. SSDs are just gonna be much faster, and like I said, Lightroom Classic is a storage-based application, so it's gonna be constantly reading and writing data from your SSD or from your storage location to make sure the files are there and all of that stuff. So I guess I should mention, how do you actually edit off of an SSD? Well. It's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is create a new folder on your SSD, put all your photos in that new folder, and then when you open up Lightroom, all you have to do is import that folder. Lightroom is gonna read all the files from the folder that's on your SSD, and now you're gonna be editing off of the SSD. Now, if we're talking about setting up a faster workspace, we need to talk about your Lightroom catalogs. If you're that one photographer, and I know a few of them, who do all of their editing in one catalog, every single photo shoot is under the same catalog, and they have over 15,000 photos in the same catalog, this is such bad practice. Not only is it gonna make your entire workflow slow, but it's also gonna be confusing when you're culling and editing your photos. The one thing to note here is that the more photos you have in a Lightroom catalog, the slower Lightroom is going to perform when opening an image, when applying edits to an image. So what I suggest is creating a new catalog for every single photo shoot. For every time you go out and shoot, even if I go out to shoot with my friends, I'm creating a new catalog 
for that and I'm keeping that Lightroom catalog file with my raw files in case I ever wanna pull it up again. Okay, so let's um, plug in this SSD here and we're gonna import our photos into Lightroom. Let's make sure I'm screen recording here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we have a brand new Lightroom catalog open. You can see we have zero photos in here. We're gonna click on import 682 photos, but we're gonna go through it pretty, uh, pretty quickly using a couple of my methods. So right away you can see how fast our photos were imported into Lightroom. It's still fetching these initial previews, but they imported pretty fast and that's because we are editing off of our SSD. But we actually don't have to wait for it to fetch all of these previews. We can actually start culling our photos right away. So the keys you need to know for Lightroom, the most important keys you need to know for Lightroom is your one to nine keys on your keyboard. So I actually like to use a six to nine keys on my keyboard and six is gonna give your photos a red color seven is going to give your photos a yellow color eight is going to give your photos a green color and nine is going to give your photos a blue color so let me break down my whole method and how i sort and call through my photos because it's pretty easy and you can copy this exact same method okay so first thing i do is i open up my photos and i mark all of my select photos with the color red so basically what i'll do is i'll go through one by one through these photos this one, I'm not gonna choose, her eyes are closed. And I'll go through and just select all the good photos. And while I'm doing this, the only buttons I'm clicking is this right button on my keyboard. And then I'm clicking six on my keyboard to give it a red label. I'm giving every photo a red label because those are gonna be my selects. So I'm just gonna go through really fast. And the reason why Lightroom is being so fast is because we're editing off this SSD. This one, I don't mind. I like this one. Kind of go back and forth to make sure they look good. This one where she's looking down looks better. This one. I wanna know how many photos I am already in. So you can see I'm already on the 110th photo. Honestly think that took me like five minutes. Okay, so now once you have your photos called and you have your selects, all the photos you actually want to edit are in red. All you have to do is go down to the sort button here, click on capture time and change it to label color. Now you can scroll all the way up and you have all your photos that you selected, all the photos that you want to edit at the very top of Lightroom. So let me give you a little rundown on my color method and how it works. So all of my selects are in red. You can see that here. Once I start going through my photos and I start editing, so let's say, you know, this photo looks pretty decent. I don't think I wanna do any Photoshop work. I'm gonna go in and kind of just crop this. After that's cropped and it's good to go, I honestly think that looks good. I don't think it would require any Photoshop work. What I would do if a photo is good and I think it's ready to go, I would click the number eight key on my keyboard and label it green. So I'm giving it that green rating. So now if I go back to library, open everything up, you can see that we have our green photo that we just rated below our red photos. As I'm editing, let's say I'm going through, I'm going through, I get to this photo here, right? It's a more close up shot. You can see a little bit more detail of her skin. And I'm kind of like, I wanna bring this into Photoshop and retouch. Well, for photos like this, let's say the same thing. I started editing it. I slap on one of my edits and I'm like, this looks good, but I do wanna make that change in Photoshop. Well, I'm gonna label this with the number seven key on my keyboard, which is gonna give it a yellow color rating. So you can see we have all of our red photos. We also have our yellow photo, which we're gonna be opening up in Photoshop later. And then we have our photos that are good to go. So essentially I'll go through edit all of these photos, and then mark everything either yellow if it needs to be opened in Photoshop later, or green if it doesn't need to be and it's ready to go. So at the very end of everything, after the Photoshopping, after the editing, every single one of your photos that you've selected should be green. Just for the sake of this section here, 
let's make all of these green, okay? These are all photos that are ready to go. I just have to do my last call. I would select all of these. I would actually create a new collection. And a collection is basically just like a folder in Lightroom. So I'll do, you can say ready to go or selects, whatever you wanna do. And you can do include selected photos as long as they're selected. Now you have a folder of just your selects. So you can see we have 88 of our selects in our collection. And if we scroll down, everything is green and we're all ready to go. What we're actually gonna do is not sort these photos anymore. Switch it back to capture time, okay? We're not gonna be sorting by label color anymore. And basically what you're gonna do is go through this. I really like this photo. I'm gonna send this one to my client. I'm gonna label it blue. With the number nine key on my keyboard, it's gonna give it the blue color. I'm just gonna do it for the fun of it. Label everything blue the ones you want to actually deliver. Back to library, open this up, and you can see all of your selects are here. They're ready to go from the last call. And instead of you know selecting all these photos individually like this to export them, you're just gonna go down to sort, sort it by label color again. It's gonna throw all your blue ones at the bottom. You're gonna click on your last one, hold shift on your keyboard, select the other one, and then you're just gonna click on export and you're gonna export them to your folder on your desktop. Okay, so now let's talk about how to actually edit faster and not call faster. So we learned the calling process, we learned the color method. We have our folder of selects here. Let's edit faster. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna label all of these red. Okay, so we're ready to go. None of our photos have any edits on them and we're gonna start with the first one and we'll start from here. So I like to use something called Sync Edit. So this is, I think, one of the most important tools that's built into Lightroom to speed up your workflow. So essentially what you do is you go into your develop tab here and you make your edit. So again, I'm gonna use the preset that I made for this photo here. I'm gonna adjust the exposure here. I think this is good to go. This is how I want all of my photos to look because I want them to take the same theme or the same look. So now I'm gonna click on the one photo. Literally all I'm doing here is editing one photo. There's no need to go through every single one, apply the preset to every single one. It takes too much time. Click on the first photo, click on the last photo, sync edits in the bottom corner here. Then you're gonna click on check all. And this is gonna apply whatever that photo has, everything that's checked is gonna apply those adjustments to every other photo. So we kind of just want to apply the adjustments that are on that photo. And I know my preset that I used, it doesn't have any transform to it, so we're gonna remove that. It also doesn't have any lens correction, so we're gonna remove that. And I'm just gonna click synchronize, and that's it. You can see the edit is applied to every single photo here. And if I click on the first one, go through every single photo, has the same edit as that first photo. There's no need to go through every single photo and make every little adjustment to every photo. Save your time, save everyone else's time, and just sync your edits with the first photo. Light, lighting the subject from one side, you turn, now it's backlit, and you know your exposure changes. So you basically just wanna go through, change up your exposure, maybe adjust your contrast for some photos, maybe add some mass, crop your photo, and that's it. So even doing this, I don't do it individually. I still do it in bulk edits. So for example, I edit everything in bulk, in sections. So I know that these two are gonna require the same edit. I'll start on the first photo of that section. I change, make the edits that I wanna make, add a mask in here, throw it over here, up the exposure a little bit, not too much or else it starts looking fake. Maybe I'll drop the highlights a little bit, up the shadows, bring down the blacks to add some contrast. And there we go. So this was the photo, our first photo. We go to the right. This was the other photo. This one looks a lot better. Now I'll go to library. I click on this photo here. I click on this photo here. I click on sync settings. Now what did I add to this photo? Well. All I have to do is select mask and I click on sync. Now I click on this photo. This photo got the exact same edit as this photo. All I have to do is go into develop. You only have to do this if you added any mass. All you have to do is click on the mask and drop it. 
drag it, change it, and that's it. So this photo looks exactly like this photo, the edit, and that's it. So now these two photos are done in my eyes. There we go. Or I guess we label them green. Those are done and I keep editing in these sections. So you can see these photos here are all the same where she's sitting on the chair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the exposure again. I kind of like the bright look. Drop my highlights a little bit. I think that looks good, honestly. Same thing, I click on here, click on the rest of that set. So I'm just selecting sets at a time. I click on sync settings. I didn't do any masking, everything else. I just up the exposure and highlights, click sync. You can see the edit takes on all these photos. I go through, maybe adjust the crop on this one. Crops, obviously you'll have to do all manually, but that's it. These photos here, done. Click on eight, they're labeled green. That's it, like sync edits is one of the most important tools in Lightroom. Now syncing edits makes your workflow faster, but one thing you probably notice is that I didn't edit any of the photos here. I didn't have to use any color adjustments, nothing, and that's because of presets. So I still like to use presets to this day. I have presets that I use every single day for my portraits. One of them that I really like and one of them that I really enjoy using is my new preset Daffodil. Uh, it works for most portraits, but mostly outdoor portraits. Um, it's gonna give you that really flat look, but also a desaturated greens look. There's no greens in this photo, so it's hard to see, but it's gonna give you that flat look, and really all you have to do is adjust your exposure and temperature almost all the time. It's literally exposure or temperature. In this case, because blue was the only color in the photo, I would actually go through and I would bring back the saturation on the blue and maybe bring back some of that teal to give it that orange teal look and there we go so like just a little adjustment a little color adjustment in the hsl tab and that's it like i don't have to go through the color grading tab and the hsl and the calibration tab and make every single edit when it's already done for me you know so presets are huge you can see how fast i edited this photo using a preset i would suggest using presets if you have a good one or you have one that you really like if you are interested, I am selling my daffodil preset right now, but stay tuned because I will be dropping a new portrait preset pack with like 10 presets in there. So stay tuned for that. And for my last tip, bulk edit everything. Editing your photos in bulk is gonna save you so much time in the editing process. So what do I mean by bulk editing? Well, so you're gonna be culling everything at the same time. After you're done culling, you're not gonna move on from culling until it's all done. Then you're gonna start editing everything at the same time. After you're done editing, you're gonna go into Photoshop and Photoshop everything at the same time. After you're done Photoshop, you're gonna go through, do your last call at the same time, and then you're gonna deliver all the photos at the same time. Don't go through the process of culling, editing, Photoshop, and then delivering the photos for each individual photo. And with that being said, that's it. That's how I'm able to edit extremely fast in Lightroom. Now, like I said, I do use AI now to help me cull because I honestly hate culling and AI helps me get it done even faster. And I was actually able to get this session done in under 15 minutes, culled, edited, and delivered in under 15 minutes. It was absolutely crazy. You can actually see the photos here, how good they turned out. And if you're curious of how the client responded, I'll just throw that up on the screen too. I hope this helps. And if you learned something, make sure you click that like button and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.